Dancing touches on his warm-up tosses here. Take a look at the starting lineup he'll be facing for Detroit. Curtis Granderson will be the first man he faces in his major league career, followed by Ramon Santiago and Carlos Guillen. Miguel Cabrera again in the cleanup spot with Aubrey Huff, the DH, hitting fifth ahead of right fielder Maglio Ordonez. Brandon Inge is at third. Gerald Laird back in the lineup. He'll catch and hit eighth. And the shortstop, Adam Everett, will bat ninth. Six foot five right hander Wade Davis. You heard about the competitive uh, nature. He is a power pitcher. Got a good curveball to go with that. Working on a changeup. Competitive workhorse. Love that statement. And here's one of my favorites right here at the bottom mound presence. You heard me talk about that a lot this year. That means a lot. The, the composure, the mound presence. Guy just gets on the mound, believes in his stuff, and goes right after it. And I think that's what we're going to see today. Well, Curtis Granderson steps in here against the rookie right-hander as Wade Davis is all set to begin his major league career. And the first pitch is a bit outside. One ball, no strikes. We're underway right on time this afternoon with Laz Diaz calling the balls and strikes. There's a foul ball back. Fastball. The count is one and one. Going to be wide, two and one. Wait, 24 tomorrow. The third rookie pitcher to start a game for the Rays this year. He's behind Granderson, three and one. He follows Jeff Neiman and David Price to make a start. Foul ball runs the count to three and two. Nice delivery, fluid, good rush to that, good finish. So far, so far hitting about 91. Get it up there to 94. And a swing and a miss. He strikes out Granderson. One away as Wade Davis takes care of the first hitter he faces in the big leagues. And yeah, 92, 93 with this fastball up. Nice fluid delivery. Here's a nice hip turn. Good balance. Nice finish. First strikeout. Well, that's a good start. One away, and Ramon Santiago hitting from the left side. He's at second base this afternoon for Detroit. And he starts him with a strike. Fastball. So Wade in four games this past spring. A breaking ball right there. And it's foul. He just got a little piece of it. 02. He made three spring starts and another appearance for the Rays. It's a foul ball back. He started a game against the Yankees over in Tampa. A couple of perfect innings and he was impressive there, picking up strikeouts of Mark Deshera, Alex Rodriguez, and Robinson Cano in that spring outing. Pitches away. One ball and two strikes. His first changeup right there, 84 mile an hour change. Not a bad try. This one is a little wide as he. Came in with another breaking ball. That one outside, two and two. And strike three call on the inside corner. He got that fastball in there at 94. And he picks up strikeouts of Granderson and Santiago to start the game. You know, Sean Riggins gave us a pretty good report. He says he's not afraid to pitch inside. That was a power fastball, 94. 
Navarro sets up in. Look at that. Just paints him up inside. Perfect pitch. Two gone, and now Carlos Guillen. Does he throw hard? Yeah, that was hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first pitch strike. Davis ready to go again. Guillen stepping back here. Making him wait a little bit. And a foul back. That's a fastball in the mid 90s. Well, the ladder going now. 95 on that one. The one to Santiago for strike three. Looking with 94. Stairs. Fastball with uh, a little something extra on that one. Two outs, bases empty. One and two, the count. And strike three call. Gideon out on strikes, and Davis strikes out the side to start his big league career. One, two, three, go the Tigers. Bottom of the first coming, Detroit nothing, Rays coming in to hit. Leonardo Navarro and Fernando Perez rounding out the lineup for Joe Madden. And when Jackson returns to the trap, an 11 game winner so far this year, ERA is excellent. 3.09, less hits than innings pitched. And the first pitch is a strike into Jason Bartlett, and that has been a real key for Edwin Jackson this year. First pitch strikes. And another 0 2. He's only given up 159 hits in 175 innings this year, which is excellent. Anytime you're one to one or less, excellent. And Bartlett fouls one out of play. Holding the count at two strikes. Got a souvenir right away. Kid Sunday. That's the idea. Got to get, boy, there's about four or five kids up there. They got to get one each. And a fly ball back into straightaway center field. Granderson is there and he makes the catch. So Bartlett is out of there. Take a look at the Tigers defensively. Just saw Curtis Granderson run one down. Carlos Guillen in left field. Granderson in center. Maglio Ordonia is in right field tonight around the infield. Brandon Edge and Adam Everett on the left side. Ramon Santiago and Miguel Ferreira on the right side. And Gerald Laird behind the plate for Edward Jackson. Carl Crawford fouls one back in the strike. Edwin, when he was with the Rays, was a real favorite in the clubhouse. Everybody loved him, his teammates particularly. 
And he and Crawford were especially close. This pitch is down and the count is one and one. It's kind of interesting, and you know this, Kevin, from uh, being a catcher yourself and managing. You know, pitchers tend to herd together and position players tend to do the same. And you don't often see uh, pitchers and position players mixing, but boy, these two guys, Crawford and Jackson, really hit it off. Yeah, there, that's, there's some truth to that. You're right. Battery mates get along well. Of course, pitchers hang together. Inside, it's two and two. But I read those comments that Carl had about uh, facing Edwin, and he said, you know, nobody's surprised basically of the year he's having. We all knew he could do do this. Foul out of play. Edwin came to the Rays from the Dodgers, and his first full year with the Rays. He was 5 and 15 with a 576, and then last year 14 and 11 with a 442, and he has continued that progress with the Tigers. And a little popper back, a third foul grabbed by Inge. So Edwin Jackson retires Carl Crawford. Two outs. Base is empty for Ben Zobris. And out of the third spot, overall hitting 283 with his 23 home runs. Like that e jack. And it's popped up foul. It's going to carry out a play for a strike. A couple times last night with a single little walk. It's going to be down a little bit, and it's one and one. Ground ball, right side. Santiago to his left, throw to first, and Zobris is out. Going in ahead first, and that retires the side. We're through an inning, no score. Great start for Wade Davis in the first with three strikeouts. Yeah, Granderson a power fastball up, and then a power fastball into Santiago for strike three. Look at him. Here's a cutter. Excellent. Right on the hands of Carlos Guillen. He strikes out the side in his make big debut. You can't do any better than that. Ram Scott replay. Well, he faces Miguel Cabrera. This lineup doesn't get easier. And there's a first pitch strike. 
this call. You know, Dwayne, the other thing I like is that he came up at every level through the minor leagues. He's got about, uh, well, I, got, I counted 767 and two thirds minor leagues innings, and that's that's really important. That that's kind of goes back to the old days where, yeah. you know, pitchers used to throw. You would want 750 innings out of your minor league pitchers, and that's exactly what Wade Davis has had. One and two, and that's by design. You know, the Rays, when uh, over the past three years or so, they, they tried to implement the idea that number one, they they didn't want to rush players to the minor leagues. They also didn't want them to have a sense of entitlement. They wanted them to have a sense, a sense of accomplishment. They have earned their way here, and it's something that is. It's difficult to do not easy to get to the big leagues and they, and they didn't want that kind of uh, mentality. There's a swing and a miss. Cabrera is down on strikes and he missed the fastball. That's four consecutive strikeouts for Wayne Davis. He's got late life. It says 92 on the gun here on TV but it's got some jump to it above the hands of Cabrera. He strikes out the first four men he faces in the big leagues. Aubrey Huff is going to be the hitter. Let's check in with Todd Callis. Wayne, just a simple advice from Joe Madden as Huff fouls one back. He said before the game, all I told Wade Davis was to be himself. He said, don't throw the fastball faster. Don't try and get more break on the breaking ball. He said, your stuff's good enough to succeed at this level. Just be yourself. And this guy looks very composed, guys. Put away to Huff, and the count goes to one and one. So they to finish that point. On uh, Davis being in the minor leagues and, and brought up this foul ball down the right side. The count is one and two. And that's absolutely by design because the Rays wanted all of their minor league players to feel as if they had earned getting here and it wasn't something that they had a right to, to be in the big leagues. Whoops, long shot, deep right field, and that one's going to get out of here. Home run by Aubrey Huff. Two pitch, and the Tigers will take a one nothing lead. Four strikeouts, and then the long ball off the bat of Huff. That's his first home run in a Detroit uniform, his 14th home run overall this year. Yeah, actually, a good acquisition by the Detroit Tigers, giving the left handed power bat. He got a fastball, he was trying to go in, and didn't get it in there enough. The ball sets up in one and two, and this one. And into the wheelhouse of Aubrey Huff. A home run to right. Magli Ordonez takes the first pitch down, 1-0. This one a little bit off the plate. Two balls and no strikes. This one close, but off the plate again. And it's a three and oh count. Ordonez takes a strike. Like his delivery though. I can see where he's gonna have very good command, very fluid, nice drop step. Watch him go back, just very short, good hip turn, no rush to the delivery. And the ball explodes out of his hand. Fastball foul back. Full count. Davis to the plate. Swing and a miss. Boy, he was quick with that fastball. Strikeout number five. Ordonia is out of there. Yeah, this is 96 right there. A little extra. That's just natural ability. I mean, there's no force in the delivery right there to get it to 96. That's just a good balance, good arm speed. Now it's Brandon Inge. Pitch drops in there for a strike. Breaking ball. And he's ahead of 
revenge. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Inge is out on strikes. That's six strikeouts already. Detroit gets a run on the home run by Huff. We go to the bottom of the second. One nothing Detroit. Toyota's National Clearance Event. Get amazing deals on a great selection of new Toyotas. Toyota moving forward. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Well, there's Carlos Pena to open the bottom of the second inning. Hitting against the shift and the pitch is a strike around the knees. Pena, Burl, and Longoria for the Rays. Nothing at two. Nasty. Slider right there. He's got a nice yeah, his, delivery too. He does, and his slider, his slider is what the average fastball is in the big league sometimes. 88, yeah. Sometimes more. Two strikes to count to Carlos. Popped up. Left side. Inch. Makes the catch. Pages retired. One away. Pat Burrell up here, the DH. If you're traveling and can't catch the race, watch the games on your computer with MLB.tv, the ultimate baseball experience. 100 out of market games per week live on your computer and catch the games you missed on demand. For details, visit racebaseball.com where baseball is always on. Pat Burrell waves and misses. That's a strike. Pat had a hit last night, one for two, drove in a couple of runs. He had two sacrifice flies in that game. Pitch is high, and it's one and one. First time in his major league career that he had two sacrifice right? flies in the same game. I was <laughs> surprised to find that out. He hits this one back into center field. Granderson, though, with a lot of territory, and he makes the catch. Two gone. Well, usually, I guess one of those goes out of the ballpark, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in Philadelphia. Our Toyota friend, Evan Longoria, with his eight game hitting streak, is 15 for 34 with three homers and 11 runs batted in for the life of that streak. Right 
down 99 runs batted in for Evan Longoria. He takes a strike. Out a bit. It's one and one. Strikes. The other thing about Edwin Jackson, you know, the Dodgers signed him as a position player, and so he's a, he's a converted pitcher. And we used to talk about that all the time about the play catch up from a pitching perspective because of that. Gifted with this great arm, and you talk about play catch up. Well, you know, he's only. 25. He's going to be 26 in in a few days. Here. Right, September 9th. There's a high fly ball back into left. Down the line, back goes Gann. Gone. Home run for Evan Longoria. His 28th home run of the year. That is RBI number 100, and this game is tied. So Longoria hits one out. He's been doing this for a couple of weeks now. Able to really get his hands inside. The fastball's coming there. And keep it fair. Quick. Take a look right here. Falls. The inside part of the plate gets his hands, pulls his hands right in there. And good concentration down the ball. Hockey taking a pitch wide. And so Longoria driving in 100 runs for the first time. The Rays have teammates with a hundred runs batted in a piece. One and one, and that's a career high in the home run department. Longoria as well. Yeah, 28 home runs, 100 RBIs, and hitting 280 after that home run. Two and one now, so pretty solid year right there. Carlos Pena with a hundred, and now Longoria with a hundred. Yeah, two. Yeah, and he, and he can play defense too. How about that? <laughs> Think the Rays knew what they were doing, locking him up. Mm -hmm. There they are, the Rays teammates with a hundred RBIs apiece. First time in Rays history. Now full count to Aki. It's powers on the corners. Well, you're not kidding. Couple of hundred RBIs right there. Aki fouls it back, forcing another 3 2 pitch. Well, if you want power on the corners, you got it. Pena and Longoria. And a line drive going to be caught by Everett. Sharply hit. Hockey's out of there. So are the Rays, but they pick up a run on the home run by Evan at the end of two.
One one tie as we move into the third. The Robo Los. A hit with the youngsters here on Kids Sunday. I didn't realize Carlos is that flexible. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be able to stretch it first. He can do that and more. Uh. Wade Davis back to the bound for the Rays. Gerald Laird, the catcher, steps in. The pitch is popped up, foul out of play. Well, Davis has faced seven hitters. He struck out the first four men he faced, gave up the home run to Huff, and then struck out Ordonez and Inge to finish off the top of the second. Now a strike to Laird. Inside. One and one. I thought it was really. Uh, Interesting too. Following the home run by Huff, he fell behind Ordonez three and zero, oh, and came back to strike him out. Yes, he did. Good, good composure. Two on the count. There's a popper, short left Bartlett. Out from shortstop. He's got it. So that will be the first down. Well, if you're a young pitcher and there are guys who've pitched in the big leagues before you, what do you do? Do you watch and learn from them? Do you listen? Wade Davis talked about watching Jeff Demon pitch the other night. Yeah, I try to watch everybody I can to pick up a little bits of information here and there. And you know, I picked up some stuff from him last night, and I can definitely use it. Adam Everett pitches inside one and all and why wouldn't you well there's there's another guy that uh, I think he's been the most consistent starter all season long is Jeff Neiman seven and two thirds innings the other night against the Tigers you know another guy that spent some time in the minor leagues Jeff mm -hmm. Neiman coming out of college of course but you know he signed in 04 and had a few hundred innings in his own right in the minor leagues. The catch. The two outs here in the top of the third. So the first time through the Detroit lineup, very good results here from Wade Davis. Well, just seeing him through nine hitters, he, he's able to pitch north and south, not just east and west. Side to side, he's able to go up the ladder, which is really important. And he's six foot five, so he, he's got to be tough to pick up. Curtis Granderson takes it wide. Davis went 3 2 with him and then struck him out on a fastball up to begin the game. It's pop foul and that is straight back and out of play. One and one. See that high fastball is just up out of the reach. Can't quite get to it. You just saw Laird pop up a minute ago in Everett and Everett, and same thing with Granderson right there. That's how he struck Anderson out in the first inning. And he drops this one in there. Breaking pitch. One and two. Throws this one into the dirt. Doubled up on a curveball. It's two two. Joe Madden and Dave Martinez looking on from the Rays dugout. And a line drive. Second base retiring the side. A one, two, three, third. We go to the bottom of the third. We're tied one one.
One one time a couple of solo home runs in this game thus far. Here's Deonna Navarro facing Edwin Jackson. Pitch is upstairs. One ball no strikes. Pitch pretty close ball two. Two and oh. Check in with Todd Callis with some special guests. Yeah, I've got a group here from Lake Rails related to our starter tonight, Wade Davis. Ben and Marsha Davis' with parents. Ben, first of all, how many people are here watching Wade, and how's, how's it been so far for you guys? Uh, there's quite a few people came over. I've gotten a dozen phone calls or more from friends that are coming over to watch and text messages uh, is what it's like. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, you know, I was hoping he came out and just played well, but he's done better than I thought he would. How was it watching the three strikeouts in the first inning? Was that about as, as good as you could have hoped? Well, I, 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 I'm speechless. Marsha, what was your reaction? My best reaction was to watch my husband. It was, he was very emotional, and Wade did a great job. Yes, he did. His fiance is next to me, too, and she's on pins and needles, guys. So it's uh, as Fernando Perez tries to butt, and he'll be safe as Inch can't barehand it. The Rays have runners on first and second now. For you guys to watch Wade here make his major league debut, the fact that it's here at Tropicana Field, not where he had to travel, that, that make it a little more special, knowing it's not far from his backyard? Well, uh, a lot better than having to buy a plane ticket to Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> To have, you know, uh, people that he grew up with to come watch him play and, you know, his friends and family here, yeah, that means a lot. He told us yesterday it was fulfilling a dream for him to be a major league pitcher. What does this mean to the family? Uh, to me? To me? The family, yeah. Oh, uh, I told him when he was little and playing Little League that his chances of playing professional ball were zero. Why is that? Well, you look at all the, the, the kids that, that play Little League. Uh, if you can get money to go to college, you're doing great. But the, the number of guys that actually make it to this big league field, the percentage is pretty low. So I, that's kind of a false hope for a lot of kids, you know? But it, he proved me wrong. Congratulations on your son beating the odds, Ben. Thank you. It's phenomenal. Yep. It, guys, Davis family's enjoying this one. Back to you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Todd. We appreciate the visit there. There's a line drive and a base hit. South rider in the left. Bartlett's aboard. Stopping at third is Navarro. And suddenly the bases are loaded here for the Rays in the third inning. The base hit to center by Navarro. The butt hit by Perez and Bartlett in the left. So they're loaded with nobody out. And it's going to be the... Edwin Jackson, Carl Crawford matchup again here in this tie game, 1-1. Yeah, you can't be friends now. Carl got jammed in the first inning, had a little pop up to Brandon Inge, and his numbers with the bases loaded, 421, a couple of grand slams this season, three for eight. I love that bunt by Perez to set mm -hmm. this inning up. He's utilizing that speed again. We've already seen him try to bunt about four times in the. Three games he's played. So here's Crawford. Waving and missing. Strike one. And how about that? There's an opening slider from Edwin Jackson. Face is loaded behind him with nobody out. Third, 
And Eric Cooper calls Crawford out on the 6 4 3 double play. Now Joe Madden's going to argue it. Yeah, well, just from the naked eye, I agree with Joe Madden. I thought Carl beat it. Sure, we'll look at a replay here in a second, but it uh, looked like Eric Cooper was going to call safe and change his mind. What it looked like to me. I, I think Carl beat that. It's a good turn. Good turn by Santiago. But I think Carl just did get in there. Well, the way it's set up when Everett had to go to his right. Yeah. You thought that would make it difficult That's to double feet. up Crawford, and we'll take another look. Yeah, here's the feet. The ball to his right. Good turn. Good slide going in to try to break it up. Oh, Carl's safe easily. Oh, my goodness. Easily. There's Carl hitting the bag. The ball's not even there yet. The ball's not even there yet, and Carl's at the bag. That's just a terrible call. Terrible, terrible. Look at that. I mean, that's not even close. Yeah, what not a shame. Not even close. My goodness. So he missed that call, and it cost the Rays an out here. Ben Zobras takes the pitch for a strike. You know, that's a call like that really changes this. If, if you've got Crawford at first with Perez at third and one out, all kinds of things you can do instead of having a man at third with two outs. Now two strikes to count is over. Boy, that's a very big miss. Huge. At first base. Huge play. You know, I'm watching Eric Cooper from up here in the booth. I, I thought he was going to go say safe because it looked like he started to have his hands out spread out and all of a sudden he decided to, to ring him up. That wasn't even close. Very poor call. Way upstairs. One and two. Well, the Rays have taken a two to one lead. Boy, I, that takes the wind right out of the sails of a potential big inning. Sure does. And this one gets away from Laird and down the line comes Perez. He scores standing up. And the Rays get their second run of the inning. It's a three to one game. Uh, uh, Perez scored standing. Perez will take that. You know, Laird. Seen him throw so well in this series. He just didn't get over there. That ball's a catchable ball, but he just didn't shift. It's a big slider. Now, Jackson did miss location, but really, as a catcher, your job with a runner at third, especially, you got to shift over there and block it. You can't just go to try to make the backhanded stab at it. It goes a wild pitch, but really, Laird should have blocked that. Zobras pops it short left inch out there from third base and makes the catch. That's going to retire the side. The Rays score two. We're through three and it's three to one Tampa Bay.
Braves get two out of the bottom of the third to take a three to one lead. We go to the fourth and it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Aflac. Aflac. We've got you under our wing of the five starting pitchers who've made their major league debuts on their birthdays. Who was the only winner? Santiago leading off with the pitch as well. Wade Davis will celebrate his 24th birthday tomorrow. Pitches down 2 0. Simone Santiago followed by Carlos Guillen and then Miguel Cabrera. That's a strike. Two and one. Davis with six strikeouts tonight or this afternoon. Fly ball to center. And Perez is there to make the catch. Speaking of six, with the summer select six pack, you can save money off the single game ticket price and select the games you wish to attend. Packages start at just fifty-seven dollars. Call eight 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 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com to purchase your set today. One out in the fourth. Carlos Guia. Stairs one and all. Davis struck out Granderson, Santiago, and Guillen in the first. He got Cabrera in the second. Gave up the Huff home run and then strikeouts of Ordonez and Inge. Pop foul. That's out of play. The count is one and one. Since then, he got Laird on a pop to short. Souvenir in the upper deck right yeah, there. Nice, nice play. Everett hit a fly ball to center. Granderson lined the second. Santiago out on a fly ball to center to start the fourth. Two balls and a strike. Breaking pitch attempt that stayed up and away. Pitch is fouled out of play. 2-2. Two, two. Thought the conversation. Todd had with uh, Wade's parents, uh, Ben and Marsha. That was kind of on point there. You know, his dad uh, showing a sense of uh, realism there in, in terms of trying to calculate the odds. Yeah. You know, you, you want to encourage all the youngsters. There's a foul ball out of play. But it is difficult to get to the big leagues. There's no question about that. And in fact, that's what makes it so special. All of these guys who spend time in the major leagues, sometimes you take it for granted. Because certainly from our point of view, the game looks so easy. It's a difficult game to begin with. Fly ball, center field. Fernando Perez is there, and he'll take care of that for the second out. But you do well, beat the odds by getting here. I, and I would believe most parents would say that too. I mean, I know mine did. Mine said the same thing because I, you know, I have a pretty good accounting background in school and. I said, make sure you get your college education. <laughs> you know, I stay in it all these years. But uh, his dad, how about saying zero percent? Yeah. <laughs> Not two or four or five or ten. Zero. <laughs> that just shows you the determination of uh, Wade Davis. Yeah, a swig and a miss by Cabrera. Big catch, big one. Well, mine didn't say zero. They said very little. <laughs> but, and, and you know, you have to, as we, as we discussed, you have to be realistic about that. But I'm sure that. And we haven't talked with with Wade obviously about things like that, but that will light a fire under a young man to say, you know what, I can make it. Two strikes to count. A couple of fastballs by Miguel Cabrera here in the fourth inning. Well, when you think about it in the big leagues, I mean, 40 man roster, okay, there's 1,200 jobs, but during a normal season, there's really only 750 jobs. Foul ball back. That's how to play to the right. And you're you're scratching and clawing and fighting for one of those spots. Yep. You know that's why I like going back to what we talked about earlier. He worked his way up. He had success at every level. Level going back to the Appalachian League in 04, the New York Penn League, Midwest League, Florida State League, Southern League, IL, International League, all the way up. And a popper, short right. Pena, Ewell Moore, and Zelbrist. Aki angling to the ball and makes the catch. 
That'll retire the side. One, two, three. We got to the bottom of the fourth. Three, one, Tampa Bay. Question Affleck, we've got you under our wing. Five starting pitchers making their major league debuts on their birthdays. Only one a winner. That would be Edwin Jackson. That was against Randy Johnson on Edwin's 20th birthday in 2003. Here's Carlos Pena. He's out front, strike one, change up right there. How about this? The other guys who made their big league debuts as a starting pitcher Larry Durker in 64, Jerry Arrigo, the lefty, Tom Hughes, and Boots Poffenberger in 1937. I love that name. Yeah. Ball player's name right there. <laughs> oh, two, the count. Either, either that or a popcorn maker or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we've got to do some research on him. I love that. Well, Larry Durker, you, you, your colleague, your friend, Larry, and the guy yeah. that, uh, from my high school and Gabe Kapler's high school in uh, Woodland Hills, California. Yeah, he was a Taft High School. A phenom, a teenage phenom with the uh, Colt 45. Oh, was he ever? Pena out on strikes. Well, he started him with a changeup. Strikes him out. That's the first strikeout here for Edwin Jackson. Now, this is by design. You're exactly right. He started him with a changeup. He finishes him with a slider right here. And you notice Verlander did that the other night. He's two, three, or four changeups to Zobrist and Pena first pitches. And that's by design. That's by design by the by the bench and, and, and probably being around Verlander. Saying, listen, you can throw hard, but you could start these power hitters off with a changeup. They're sitting on your fastball. I like that. I don't know the count to Pat Burrell. Lays off this slider. It's low. Doing nothing. This pitch is a strike. And the count two and one. We know that it was Cletus Elwood Poffenberger. There's the fly ball into right center field. Ordonez is there to make the catch. So if if, if your two given names would be Cletus Elwood, they're going to call you Boots. Boots. It's a natural yeah. progression. Boots Absolutely. Poffenberger. And apparently a guy who loved the big league lifestyle we're hearing. Here's Evan Longoria, even back in 1937, it was a pretty good way to go. Yeah, we're getting a scatter report on it. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, you didn't make too many day games after night games. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you didn't post yeah. the day games. 
There's a strike call and it's one and one. One ball, two strikes. This one is low. Two and two. Uh, it's published. I guess we could recount the story of uh, his favorite breakfast. You know, uh, Wade Boggs ate chicken before he came right. to the ballpark all the right. time. And somebody asked Boots Poffenberger what his favorite breakfast was before he pitched an afternoon game. He said, uh, eggs, bacon, and two bottles of beer. Ground ball to short. <laughs> Everett, long throw. And Longoria is out to retire the side. One, two, three. We go to the fifth. Three to one, Tampa Bay. We're moving into the fifth inning this afternoon at Tropicana Field, wrapping up the homestand. A kid's Sunday. Apparently he's all out of something. Yeah. Give him a baseball. Yeah. There's a strike here to help to start the fifth. And now the Rays will shift around a little bit more with the defensive alignment on the infield. Oh, one and one. That? Ah. Good pitch. Right back into the screen, and it's one and two. Oh, hitting his first Detroit Tiger home run. His first time up. That came in the second inning. Two and two. Ray starting the day six games back in the wild card with 27 to play. And a line drive and it's caught by Bartlett. Bartlett on the first base side of second got just high enough timing his leap to make the grab and that's the first out. A lot of hang time for Jason. So a little bit off the end of the bat. Nice job. Perfect timing. Hey, Wade Davis enjoying it. Yeah, he's yeah. appreciating that good defense. You bet. And Aki made a nice play on that line drive. And a strike to Ordonez. Like Branderson hit a line drive bullet, and he made a nice, mm -hmm. nice play also. 
one and one. Well, the early scouting report on Davis is that he's not afraid to pitch in. He's not afraid to pitch to contact. And plays like that from his second baseman and shortstop will reinforce that mindset as Ordonez has a base hit. Second hit given up by Davis. Take a look at the GMC Pontiac and Buick Road Ahead. We'll be with you on Fox Sports Florida for game one tomorrow at one o'clock and then Sun Sports game two. Our coverage begins at 630 as the Rays begin that long road trip with a stop against the Yankees in New York. Now Brandon Inge. Landy. That's a strike. Pitched his best game, I think, of the year against the Yankees. And uh, I believe had a no decision as it turned out a while back before he was sent back to Triple A. So get a day night doubleheader. <laughs> Labor Day. Oh, two. Three to one game here. We're in the top of the fifth. Both these pitchers have been working quickly. First time we've seen Wade actually from the stretch today. And a wave and a miss. He strikes out Inge. That's number seven. Second time he has struck out Inge. That's about 92, 93 on the outside corner. Look at that excellent location. Perfect. The stretch didn't bother Wade there. Now he faces the catcher, Gerald Laird. And uh, I go. Not sure if that was a. It's hard to tell. I don't. I don't know if he's throwing a slider or a little cutter. Well, yeah. The one of the scouting reports says slider. I, I asked. Uh, some people about it says throwing him more of a cutter. He's got a good good curveball and a cutter, but it has a little bit bigger break than a normal cutter. Two balls and no strikes. Well, we saw some of that action in the spring. He threw a few of those. And thought he made a very good pitch to Carlos Guillen in the first inning when he got him on strikes. Yeah, he did. Got him looking on that. That was an 85, like a cutter. Ground ball headed to short. Bartlett to hockey for the force, and that takes care of Detroit. They leave a man. We go to the bottom of the fifth, and it's three to one, Tampa Bay. Type of footwork drill for for infield, and you know after that, just you know get ready for the game, just relax and get a good meal on me. Jason Bartlett on his pregame prep. He's another guy 
who works hard, shows up to play every day. Disappointed if he's not in the lineup. Well, he's just a good player. Mm -hmm. Chance to watch him every day this year. It's been a blast. Excellent shortstop. Good short swing. Perfect in the leadoff spot. He's done yep. one heck of a job leading off. Yeah, he he has just given the the club such great advance up there. Here's hockey to lead off the bottom of the fifth. The first pitch is a strike. A slider to start the inning again from Edwin Jackson. It's fouled away. Oh, two now. Yeah, Edwin, second time around the lineup, he's been throwing more off speed and sliders first pitch to the to the race hitters. One ball, two strikes. And it's too high, two and two. Edwin got off to that very good start for the Tigers this year. He was selected to the All Star team. One of four Detroit players on the All Star team. And there's ball three full count and he he got off to that great start because he was doing something that even last year when he won 14 games with the Rays at times he struggled with his command but the first half of the year with the Tigers I'm not sure there was a better pitcher with command in the American League than Jackson a base hit the other way. So Aki has a base hit. And we'll check in with Todd Tallis. Dwayne, we have a combination of our first sign, and we've also found a group from Lake Wales. This is Ashley cheering for Wade. And what's the other sign, sign say? Lake Wales loves you. And next to Ashley is Aubrey Whitaker, who was actually a coach when he was at Lake Wales. And, and did you see signs when he was in high school? I know he wasn't originally a pitcher, that he had something special? Oh, he was a pitcher in high school. He but was, he didn't start out originally, right? Did he sw switch? Well, he could hit. He we played him, you know, all the time because he had such a good bat. But uh, you could tell, really, in little league, you could tell, you know, he had the physical uh, capabilities. So uh, he 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 was a great pitcher in high school. Did he always have this calm demeanor where it seems like nothing phases him? Yeah, he's pretty calm and cool um, and collected. That's that's an M.O. on him. How's a former high school coach of Wade's handling this day? A little nerves, adrenaline? Well, it's fun. I, I, it's exciting to be here. And I know there's some others here, too, that coached him that are here today. And I know they're excited, too. A lot of support for Wade Davis, guys. Uh, Lake Wales is in full effect here today at Tropicana Field. Back up to you. All right, Todd, thank you as Navarro lifts the fly ball to left. Well, for his major league debut, the prior scouting reports on his presence and being calm and collected have certainly held true. Five very solid innings. Only the solo home run to Aubrey Huff and then a, a base hit in the fifth to Ordonia. Only two men have reached base. Now Fernando Perez. Pops it up, third base side, Inge in foul territory, handles that one for the second out. And even with Perez, that's a first pitch slider. So a lot of breaking balls the second time around here. It's a pattern right there that hitters have to note. Two outs with Aki still at first. Now the top of the order, Jason Bartlett. May get a first pitch slider too. I would think he would. And a ground ball foul outside of first or outside of third. He did. He got the slider on that first pitch. Yep. Strike one. That's definitely a pattern. You can see it second time around the lineup. Jason just missed though, hitting a double down the line. Yep. <laughs> Ray 
Phillies with a round in the second, two rounds in the third. Bartlett with a little one hopper out to the second baseman, Santiago, who steps on the bag to retire the side. We're through five. The Rays lead three to one. of the Tampa Bay Rays and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Rays. From Tropicana Field this afternoon on a kid's Sunday we go to the sixth inning Adam Everett the shortstop leads off. Pitch is a first pitch strike. 76 pitches for Davis, one pitch into the sixth. Ground ball right side. Carlos with Davis covering. So Everett is out of there. One up, one down, and we'll swing around to the top of the batting order, Curtis Granderson. This November trained to be an umpire at the 09 MLB umpire camp at the baseball's youth academy in Compton California classes and on field instruction by major league supervisors former big league umps with over 200 years of combined experience for info go to www.mlbuc.com. Curtis Granderson. One and all the count. There's a liner, and that's going to be fair up the right side. Back into the corner. Zobris will have to go get the carom. It's going to be a stand up double for Curtis Granderson. So Granderson collects the third hit allowed by Davis. Yeah, he's always looking fastball. He got one this time. He was able to turn on it, and the, the key was holding him to a double. Ben Zobis able to get the carom and get it back in because he's always looking three anytime he hits a ball like that down the line. That's your second double of the game. Ramon Santiago with a man at second and one out. Put away. Santiago caught looking at the fastball in the first. He had a fly ball to center in the fourth inning. And a strike. One and one.
Santiago getting time from the plate umpire Lance Diaz. Good ratio 81 pitches, 52 for strikes. And the pitch is wide. Two and one. Davis took a couple extra looks back at Granderson, who was off the bag at second before that last pitch. Two one is fouled, squares the count. Granderson reaching on the one out double. Obviously, this deep into the game, we've seen several high fastballs by design. He can get the ball down, but when he needs to go up for the strikeout, he's able to do that. No chance for Santiago to catch up with that one. I don't think enough pitchers in the big leagues period do that. Go up and down. They go east and west. They go in and out. Now being Carlos able, being able to elevate is uh, really important. That don't mean. Elevate over the heart of the plate. I mean, up out of the zone where it looks like it's going to be a fastball for a strike and hitter's eyes line up and all these jumps on you. It was up the ladder. Yeah, there are times when you'll see a pitcher miss up and away. Well, there's a reason the, the, the hitter takes the pitch, it's out of the strike zone. Foul back, and the count is one and one. You know, Jim Palmer did that with the Orioles. He was a high fastball pitcher. He had a good overhand curve. And a good changeup. But he pitched up like that intentionally with two strikes. Just And he could place it there. Not where he'd make a mistake for a home run. He, he would just get it right above your hands where you look, look like you could get on it. And the ball would just jump above your hands. It seemed like. One pitch. Two balls and a strike. Fastball up and away at about 93. Well, this is your key at bat of the game and for obvious reasons because Miguel Cabrera is on deck. Man in scoring position with two outs in the sixth, the two run game. He is getting time. Granted by Laz Diaz. See Miguel leading off the seventh. Two one. And a popper foul is going to carry out of play. The fastball in. The count is two and two. Decisions in the minor leagues 51 and 39. 10 and 8 this year with Durham. Two, two. Inside off the plate. Nice ball in there and a full count. Well, they try to get him looking on a third strike right there, but at least. He did one thing. If you miss, he didn't did miss over the heart of the plate. He missed in off the plate. Now it's a full count. And it's outside. So he missed wide with the fastball to give up his first walk.
first and second now for Miguel Cabrera and Jim Hickey heads to the mound. Reminder will be in New York tomorrow for the day night doubleheader. Our coverage begins at one o'clock. The nightcap of that day night doubleheader. Our coverage begins at 630. Well, this conversation is about how to go about getting out Miguel Cabrera. We do have Aubrey Huff on deck who's already hit a home run today. But Cabrera is your money player. He's got 28 home runs. He's 338. Yeah, he's the guy who's in the top five in slugging percentage and on base percentage. So right there, 297 with men in scoring position. Third in the league and hitting. A ground ball back at third, backhanded by Longoria, and the race to the bag. He beats Granderson in to retire the side. No runs, a hit, two men left on base, and a nice play by Longoria. Rays lead 3-1. Cam take another look at that ground ball double play ball in the third when the Rays scored a run and Crawford was called out on the backside that was the crossbreed Coors Light freeze camp here's Crawford to open the bottom of the sixth inning and he takes the pitch for a strike Rays scored a run on that play and then later in the inning scored one on a wild pitch one and one. I'm sure when Eric Cooper looks at that again, and he'll hear about it, he'll say, God, how did I miss that so badly? Everybody's human, but my goodness. That wasn't close. Ball two strikes. Yeah, he's, uh, I mean, all these guys are. They're earnest guys. They're going to make mistakes. Now and then, but the, you're right, that, that was not a close play. Ground ball to short. Everett makes the play. The toss to Cabrera. One away, and that brings up Ben Zobris. By the way, you don't want to miss the Inside the Rays edition featuring Ben Zobris. It's Tuesday at 10 o'clock. On Sun Sports for a preview, visit sunsportstv.com. And he lines it into right on the first pitch. That's all the way to the wall for extra bases. Zilber is on his way to second with the double. Ben's 20th two base hit of the year. Nice load in the back leg. Gets his head down through the ball right here. 
Good balance head to the back leg right there. Nice short finish. A lot of breaking balls first pitch. Ben was ready for it. See, I guarantee you that the pattern, he was ready for the breaking ball. Now they're going to walk Pena intentionally with first base open following the one out double. Carlos is going to get the walk. Well, Pat Burles had a couple of pretty good at bats actually. He lined out to center, lined out to right. Fly balls, hit him pretty well. Certainly understand Jimmy Leland's thinking. He's looking for a double play ball, and Max is throwing a lot of sliders. Good double play pitch. And toward that end, recently Burl's pitch recognition has been pretty good. It has. So this could be an interesting battle right here. Is Jackson looks for a potential double play ball. Zobris to second, Pena at first. And a swing and a miss. He got a fastball to start it. Strike one. And he got it up and out of the zone right there. Just double checking signs, number one, and, and then how they want to attack Pat Burrell, number two. Sure. One ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Two men on with one out for the Rays. It's inside to Pat. And the fastball, and it's one and one. Okay, he's coming in with a couple of fastballs to try to set up a slider away. Field a double play depth. This one is down by the slider. Like it backed up on him. And on top of it, so far it backed up, came back in on the inside part of the play. Who won the count? Again. Well, that's what you're talking about in pitch recognition with Pat Burrell there. A couple Absolutely. of sliders, and he just laid right off. Yep. Them. Three one count. He may get a fastball up and in right here. And there's a strike. Yeah. So the fastball strike runs the count three and two. Well, he could try to go right back with that fastball. He tried to get one under his hands or he could drop a slider away. He's going to see. And it's low. He walked him. Yep. That's the recognition you're talking about. Dobris goes to third, Payne to second, and Burrow walks on a 3 2 slider. They're loaded for Evan Longoria. Longoria homered in the second inning, grounded to the shortstop in the fourth. Tigers have a conference going on the mound. Get a one two fastball out down the left field side towards the corner in the second. Bryant 
Perry, a hard throwing right hander up in the bullpen for Detroit. And a big spot for the Rays and Evan Longoria trying to add to their three to one lead. He hits a high foul down the right side out of play. That was a fastball. Shera with 102 in the RBI department. Pena has 100. So does Longoria. First time in Rays history, teammates each have 100 runs batted in. And another foul back as he came back with the fastball. Two strikes. Still throwing 94. A couple fastballs up and out over the plate. Has been hitting every fastball in, so I, I would I wouldn't even think they'd fool around inside on that one. Two. And a swing and a miss. He came back with maybe his best slider of the day right there. I think it was two fastballs to get ahead and good tilt on the slider here down and away. That's a tough hit. That's a, a clutch pitch by Edwin Jackson. Hey, he's, just, he's just been turning on everybody's fastball this past week or two, so uh, he wasn't going to see anything inside. Of course, even the one he hit out was a mistake. Edwin was trying to go away. It's hockey. Takes it inside, a fastball. No ball, no strikes. He memorializes it into left. It's going to stay up for Gian, who makes the catch. And the Rays leave the bases loaded. We have completed six, and the Rays lead three to one. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Six innings of work for Wade Davis, 18 outs. You just saw them all right there. Aubrey Huff opens the seventh inning. And he takes a breaking ball in there for a strike. Huff has accounted for the Detroit run with a home run in the second. His first in a Tiger uniform. Nothing and two, another breaking ball, and he fouls that one off his foot. So Wade Davis 
93 pitches. Two strikes into the seventh. And third time around the lineup, he starts off a couple of curveballs to Aubrey Huff to get ahead. Maglio Ordonez will be up there next. And then the third baseman, Brandon Inge. Off a pitch high out of the strike zone, a fastball. One and two. And a fly ball the opposite way. Crawford is there and makes the catch. And that's the first out in the seventh. Still got some life on that fastball. A couple of curveballs, a couple of good fastballs. Maglio Ordonez. Foul ball right off the mask of Navarro. Well, that plank with the thud off his mask. Straight back. Apparently that mask is spring loaded. It closes <laughs> automatically. And tomorrow says he's okay. One strike to count. And a breaking ball over for strike two. Third ball. Two strike count. Put away. One and two. Starting to get some action in the Rays bullpen. Well, that bullpen has been extremely busy. Ground ball. Hockey writes himself and throws. They got him. Well, Hockey after that one. Had to get up and make the quick throw to first to get Ordonia. Yeah, and on the other end, too, a nice stretch by Carlos Pena. Both ends of this. Great play by Aki. Watch Carlos stretch toward the ball. That's perfect right there. Good range going to his left. Quick feed to Carlos. Nice stretch. Branded in. That's a strike. Inch over for two. He is two of the eight strikeouts posted by Wade Davis this afternoon. One and one. You know, the fact that Wade Davis' pitches in a nice rhythm helps the defense too. You've seen about three good, really good defensive plays for him. But when you're throwing strikes and pound the zone in a good rhythm, get on the mound. Get your sign and go get him. You're going to see plays like Aki just made. He's made a couple. Bartlett made one. Any infielder will tell you that. Even move in. Wow. Yep. And he has. He's got a nice little cadence going mm -hmm. to this game. We saw Cormier a moment ago loosening in the bullpen. Davis. To 103 pitches now. Wrist down a little bit. Two and two. Swing and a miss. He comes back and strikes him out. He had inch. Out in front, that's his ninth strikeout. Middle of the seventh, the Rays lead three to one. Time for the seventh.
under arrest. And by Auto Way Toyota. If you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? Call Auto Way Toyota at 1 800 New Toyota. Wade Davis, seven innings in his Major League debut. He had 105 pitches, allowing a run on three hits, nine strikeouts, and a walk in seven innings of work for Wade Davis. Boy, he has, right from the very beginning, set his own pace. Ben and Marcia Davis, his parents, watching. Well, I, I, exactly what the scout report was that we received is what I've seen. I mean, he's got great mound presence, not faced by anything. Maintaining his velocity and life in the fastball. He dropped some nice curveballs and he is showing some sliders. Look at that last pitch was a great slider. The strikeout Brandon is. So he's given a different look here, too. Third time around the lineup to some of these Tiger hitters. Impressive. Impressive major league debut. Well, Edwin Jackson, the former Ray, goes back to the hill to work here in the bottom of the seventh. The Rays have three runs and six hits off Edwin. A couple of strikeouts and two walks, a wild pitch in the mix that allowed a run to score. And here's Deonor Navarro. He has one of the six hits. He opened the two run third with a base hit. The pitch is down, a ball to no strikes. The honor hitting 227 right now for the year. Fouls it back one and one. Blue Jays have put six up in the fifth on the Yankees in Toronto. That's 9 5 Toronto now. The lead had changed hands a couple times in that game back and forth. Baltimore leads Texas six to nothing. And the Red Sox have a 2 0 lead at the bottom of the fourth at Chicago against the White Sox. A 1 2 count. Counting this one, 27 to play. The Rays, six back. Navarro lifts a pop up. Foul ball, Inge is after it. And he makes the catch. One out in the seventh. Then we'll get Fernando Perez up here. Place your reservations for 2010 Rays season tickets. Ensure the best seats, the biggest savings, and all the great benefits, including the opportunity to purchase 09 postseason ticket packages for a limited time. Call 888 Fan Rays or visit RaysBaseball.com. Perez turns away from that. First pitch fastball. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, Edwin Jackson's maintained his velocity also. Going from me, went from 94 to 96 here in the seventh. 2 0. Oh. Side Santiago up with it over to first two outs in the seventh. Let's once again check in with Todd Callis. Quite a little different look today to the Rays bullpen. JP Howe has pitched four of the first five days in September. So Joe Madden said he doesn't want to go to Howe today, especially with a day night doubleheader around the corner tomorrow. So Howe. It's a combination of being used for the last five days and Joe is also aware that he has more relief innings than anybody in the major leagues the last two years. So he'll probably get the day off today guys. Well he has been busy as has the entire bullpen. First pitch is a strike to Bartlett. Joe Madden trying to keep the Rays in the wild card chase. Yeah, I think that's a good move. He's been taxed pretty hard. Two strike count. And a 
pitch down. One and two. Pretty good pitch though. That's where you want to live. Right there. And that was some low heat. Boy, it was. 98. This one is fouled into the stands. What a nice catch there. Stop it and catch it. Had him positioned correctly. Well, you got an all star <laughs> jersey on, so that's what you would expect. The one, two. Upstairs. Two and two. Six and all for the Rays, one three and all for the Tigers. That will run the count full. It's a good call. That was plenty out. Nice try by Edwin Jackson, but that was definitely off the plate about four or five inches. Crawford would be next if Bartlett could keep the seventh inning going. It. Jason singled in the third, one for three. Three two pitch and a foul again, forcing one more pitch here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Edwin's just airing it out this inning. He's gone back to more fastballs. Letting it fly. Three balls, two strikes. And a little tap left side, charged by Inge. Gloves and throws, and that'll retire the side. A one, two, three, seventh. We head into the eighth. Three to one, Tampa Bay. Been very good. Navila got into the act as well, so catchers can also keep their teams in the game. You too can stay in the game with just for man hair color. We go to the eighth. Wade Davis has been lifted, and Lance Cormier will 
take over here in the eighth inning as Wade Davis in his major league debut pitches seven innings, gives up a run on three hits. He struck out nine and walked one. He gave up the home run to Huff for the only run. So a very impressive outing by Wade Davis. And now leading off here in the eighth inning. Polanco, Placido Polanco, and he takes a strike. Yeah, I was impressed with uh, Wade's stuff, but but also his uh, demeanor on the mound. Just ice on the mound, very cool. No fear. On one, the count. And the Rays use. Five pitchers out of the bullpen in the game last night. And a line drive. That's going to be a base hit into center field. So Polanco comes off the bench to deliver a pinch single. He's been a thorn in the side of the Rays in this entire season series. Fleet Thomas. Will pinch hit for Adam Everett. And the Tigers have scored late in both games in this series. The first two games in this series. And the Rays bullpen been outstanding all years. Had a little tough time getting his final six outs. Let's go nine outs. One and all. Jimmy Leland, like he did yesterday, he's unloading his bench. Yeah, he pinch hit for half of his position players. Choke and Balfour is he in the raised bullpen. Give me an idea. The Tigers scored eight runs in the game last night. Eight different players scored eight different runs. That's a strike. One and two to the pinch hitter Thomas. I told you the urgency that Jimmy Lewin felt when he pinch hit for Curtis Granderson yesterday when Randy Choke came in. I would assume he'd do the same thing today. A ball, two strikes, runner at first, nobody out. He used 16 position players. And seven pitchers in the game last night. And a wave and a miss. Thomas missed the breaking ball. One away. And that's the tenth strikeout for Rays pitching this afternoon. Nine by Davis. So now Cormier. That's a good breaking ball right there, right over the top. Nice job of blocking it by Navarro. Great execution. Now Randy Choke's come in a couple of times to face Granderson. Granderson got the base hit Friday night and drove it a run. Yesterday, Leland pinch hits for him. So Bill Madden says, no Randy Choke today. I'm going to stick with Cormier, who, who can get lefties out if he, get, he drops that breaking ball on you like that. And there's a strike. Breaking ball to start Granderson. Does hit a double in the sixth. Into right, Sobris will have room. Two gone. Two outs with the runners still at first. Ramon Santiago will be the hitter. Santiago. Oh for three against Wade Davis with a couple strikeouts. He got him twice on fastballs up. Now Cormier's pitch. Down and in and he starts him with the breaking ball. Four 
Cormier. Last work in the game Thursday against the Red Sox. Ground ball foul. One and one. Cormier worked the final two innings of that game. The runner, the pitch is a ball and the throw, not in time. Polanco steals a base. That's his sixth of the year in eight attempts. And Jimmy Leland stealing bases, making things happen, trying to get back in the game, and he's also squeezed several times this year. We saw one with Adam Everett executing that. So Polanco now in scoring position at second with two outs. Santiago with a count of two and one. And a pop up. Shallow center. Bartlett out there. He's got it to retire the side. Bottom of the eighth coming. Three to one. Tampa Bay. Leading three to one, and three is a good number, guys, because we have Evan with me, and he's three. So, guess who his favorite player is? Who's, who's dad? Who's Evan's favorite player? Evan Longoria. Guys, threes are wild today. So the Rays, if they get another run, will be leading by three, and you're three, and your favorite player's number is three. That's a pretty. I think that's the sign winner today, guys. I, I don't know if we can beat that one. And by the way, Evan's only three for another week, so it's a good thing we got a hold of him today. All Guys, right, back to it. you. All right. And the decision of the judge in this case, Todd Callis, <laughs> will be final. <laughs> One strike the count to Carl Crawford, the eighth inning, home half of the inning underway. Edwin Jackson delivers, and that pitch is fouled back. Another fastball. 0 2. It has been a 3 to 1 game since the third. Stop. Alex Avila is now catching. He takes over for Laird. Polanco stays in the game as well. He's in second base, and Santiago moves over to play short. Laird and Everett lifted for pinch hitters. Carl fights off a fastball, fouling it away. One and two.
Tigers got their run on the second inning home run by Huff. Longoria homered in the second for the Rays. The Rays added two in the third. It's a 2 2 count to Carl. Navarro and Perez scored the runs. And bump by Perez turned out to be a big hit in that inning. Yes, it did. I, I like he's he's tried to do that now four times. He's gotten a couple of bunt hits already. And the three starts over this weekend for BJ Upton. Two two and a wave and a miss. Carl Crawford. Third strikeout for Jackson. One more time. Let's go to Todd Callis. It's not a sign, guys, but I, I couldn't leave without introducing the family. We have the Flynn family here, and we have four generations. Great-grandfather, Jim Flynn, 92 years old. His great-grandson, there's granddad, and there's the father. Pretty special, huh, Jim, to have everybody? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And what's the secret to life? You told me a second ago to be 92. Oh, a lot of Irish whiskey. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Guys, that's the secret to life. Four generations of the Flins, and you just got the answer. Back to you. <laughs> and you know Todd would find the answer to that question. One strike the count. The bid's over. The bitch is down. It's one and one. <laughs> hey, that's, you can't argue with experience. Todd, that's the best interview you've done. Yeah. <laughs> Put that one on the award reel. Wave and a miss. That's beautiful. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That, that's too funny. <laughs> hey, you can't top that. No. <laughs> Pitch inside. It's very simple. It's very simple. Yeah. <laughs> All the great concepts are. <laughs> One out, base is empty. Suit two to Ben Zobrist. Now the pitch is low, and we go to three and two. Bean and knee in the bullpen. Knee the lefty. There's ball four up and away. And the Rays have a base runner with one out. Jim Leland heads to the mound. Carlos Pena's due. And Leland marching to the hill with a left hander available in the bullpen. Crawford has struck out. Zobrist has walked. And a pretty direct message from Leland. He's got an idea. He's going to stay with Edwin. Don't forget, Rays fans, if you know, in Florida, over three people a day are killed in an alcohol related crash. The Florida Department of Transportation. Wants to make sure you think before you drink this Labor Day weekend. Drunk driving, over the limit, under arrest. Carlos Pena will hit for the Rays for the man at first and one out. I think we know what that message Jim Leland sent to Edwin Jackson. Obviously... I don't think it was negative saying don't give him anything to hit, but just be smart. I think it's you got to send more of a positive message to your pitcher rather than saying, hey, don't walk him or don't or, or don't give him a, a fastball over the middle. That, that puts a negative in the pitcher's mind. I don't think Jimmy Leland said that. And the pitch, and there a fastball to start him. Carlos 0 for 2 was intentionally walked in the sixth. Back in the fourth, the second time up, he started him with a changeup and struck him out with a slider. Started him with that fastball here in the eighth. Over to first, and Zobrist is back in.
Forest again with a lead. The pitch is away. The one one count. First. That one jacks it up to 120 pitches now. And there is a ball high. It's two and one. Has made as many as 132 pitches. That was in eight innings against the Texas Rangers back on May the 21st. And a foul straight back. That right back into the Tigers TV booth. Jackson still throwing 94. That's why Jimmy Leland let him go after him. I'm not sure which one ducked first. <laughs> Mario and Pemba with the ball right there. <laughs> yeah, you can get your ducking moves down. Yeah. Up here. No, it's a 2 2 count. And Pena is out on strikes. So a big strikeout for Jackson. Well, he's thrown a couple sliders to get big strikeouts. That's nasty right there. I mean, that was way off the outside corner. Get it backed up on him a little bit, but he got the job done. Cool, Carlo. But that's another good message by Leland. So he went out there and said, hey, you can get this guy out. I guarantee he didn't say pitch around him or don't make a mistake. Those are negatives. He said, hey, you got the stuff to get him out, but just be smart. I think those messages go a, long, a longer way for your pitchers rather than putting a negative in their head. Zobris back at first. Pat Burrell is the hitter. Well, that that slider that he got pain you with, you know, a pitcher backs one of those up. It surprises him, but yeah. it also surprises the hitter. Absolutely. That's why you saw the swing we did from Pena. First pitch is a strike to Burl. The backup slider is a pitcher gets so far up on top with that slider grip that it actually breaks away the other way. Instead of down and away to a or down and into a lefty, it breaks down and away. Another toss over there. Well, Pat's come close this series to hitting a few balls out of the ballpark. He's had some good, good swings. Takes one inside. It's now a ball and a strike. Jackson with his second highest pitch count of the year, 125. And a ground ball sharply hit. Inge up with it. His throw to first is wide, but Cabrera gets the tag to retire the side. Braves leave a man. We're through eight. It's three to one, Tampa Bay.
The Rays leading Detroit three to one. Crowd of a little better than 28,000 here this afternoon. And as we go to the ninth, Lance Cormier on the hill and Carlos Guillen scheduled to lead it off. And we're going to be interrupted by an individual jumping onto the field. No reason to show him. Process of being removed from the field to the delight of everyone here. So it'll begin Cabrera and Huff when we pick up play here in the ninth. The Rays interactive poll. What do you think of the Scott Kazmaier trade? Hey, a good deal. The Rays got three young prospects. Be clearing Kansas salary helps for the future. C should have kept the left-hander Scott Kazmaier and D reserve judgment until the future. Log on to SunSportsTV.com or Fox Sports Florida. That would be FSFloridaTV.com and click on the Rays link to submit your vote. Wade Davis has slipped into that spot in the rotation and pitched well in his big league debut. Now we're set. Ian in the batter's box and Fourier's pitch is a breaking ball and that's a strike. I don't think the race could have expected any more than what they got today from Wade Davis. For a great major league debut by the 23 year old right hander. Fantastic. Breaker and strike two. Well, the curveballs by Lance. About this, the Rays have gotten JP Howell up in the bullpen. Well, JP probably said, I can go. That's, you know, JP. I mean, yep. <laughs> Balfour as well. This one is fouled. The count still two strikes. Cabrera next, and then Huff. So it's the middle part of the order. Ordonez would follow Huff if it gets that deep. And a swing and a miss. Guillen is out on strikes. Strikeout the 11th of the day. And now Joe Madden comes out with Cabrera do. He wants the right hander, Grant Balfour. And the Rays are going to make a pitching change. We'll be back in a moment.
better matchup here in terms of history. In the first pitch, Balfour throws a strike to Cabrera. Cabrera 0 for 3 for the walk and two strikeouts against Balfour. This one is down. He was 6 of 14 with a home run off Cormier. Yep, strictly a, a matchup move. I'm sure people are wondering what, why it's Cormier out of the game. He got four outs, but Joe uh, Madden elects to go with the matchup. 63 appearances for Grant. It's game number 64 for him. Two balls and a strike. A lot of work. Al four worked an inning in last night's game. And he is behind three and one. The only thing with taking Cormier out is he's had a pretty good rhythm going. Mm -hmm. Matchups or not, you bring another guy in that has to get the flow of the game again. And the toughest hitter in Atlanta. 3 1, here it is. And Cabrera is walked. So Balfour gives up a walk. Madden out of the dugout again with the left handed bat of Aubrey Huff. Do. But Huff, Huff is being recalled. So JP Howell will get the call from the Rays bullpen. We'll be back in a moment. Well, more moves and the wheels continue to turn here in the night. J.P. Howell, a man Joe Madden wanted to stay away from today, and he'll face Marcus Timms, who's pinch hitting for Huff. Pitch is high. One ball, no strikes. Timms got to see him the other day and hit a foul ball home run about. 500 feet and then end up hitting the base hit for an RBI. So he's seen him in this series. We cut the miss. One and one the count. Although JP did make a nice pitch, he, he went to three and two and he threw him a changeup and Tim's rolled it on the ground through the left side of the infield. Bartlett shading the hole mm -hmm. between short and third right now. The pitch is high. It's two and one. Springer's up in the bullpen. Ordonez is on deck. Where's 
the count two and two. Start the inning. Cabrera walk. Now Thames. All against three different Rays pitchers. It's been Cormier, Balfour, and Howell in the night. And that will take the count full. Three and two. Well, they went three two last night against JP. Got the base hit you mentioned, Kevin. 3 2 now. And it's just low. He walks Thames. So now Cabrera goes to second. And that's going to be it for Howell. Two men on with one out here in the ninth. So JP walks. The one man he faces. And there will be another call to the bullpen back in a moment. Still a pretty professional hitter at the plate, too, in Maglio. Swing and a miss at the opening fastball. Strike one. Carlos Pena drop it in behind first base there in case Ramirez got too far off looking for a snap throw from the bar after the pitch. Down. One and one. Not bad thinking. Get it quick out there if you can. Sneak up on it. Infinite just came into the game looking for a big secondary lead last score. The tie and run. Three to one game. One one to count to Ardonez. He fouls it back. That's out of play. One and two. The Springer or Donez matchup only a couple of official at bats and three plate appearances total. He's over two with a walk against Springer. The one two and a little soft lighter into right. That's going to grab for a base hit. 
The bases are going to be loaded. He stuck his bat out there and almost guided that ball into right field. And so the bases are loaded with one out of the ninth inning for Detroit. Well, that's the professional hitter I'm talking about. He, he knew he wasn't going to get anything good to hit. He just made contact. Watch, you're right. He just one hands it. Fastball off the plate. Too close to take, so he makes sure he puts it in play. So two walks and a single. The bases are loaded. Brandon Inge will be the hitter. Inge over for three with three strikeouts. All of that against Wade Davis. First ball hitter in this situation too. First ball fastball hitter. And the pitch is down. One ball, no strikes. Inge one of four in his career against Springer. Hit a wave and a miss. It's one and one. So they have Cabrera at third, Ramirez at second, and Rayburn running for Ordonez at first. And a two run ball game. Foul ball takes the count to one and two. Now the Tigers scored three in the seventh and two in the eighth. Last night they had a three run ninth inning Friday night and they have a major threat in the ninth inning of this game today. He's shortening up a little bit now he's choking up more in the back looking to put it in play. The one two and a foul ball headed toward the Rays dugout. Madden making pitching change after pitching change here in the ninth, trying to get the best matchup he can. One and two upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Pitched last night. He pitched Friday. He pitched Thursday. He pitched Wednesday. Back in today. Two two. Swing and a fly ball in deep to left. That ball is going to get out of here. A grand slam home run. Inge hits a grand slam home run in the ninth inning. 27th home run of the year. And the Tigers have a four run ninth to take a five to three lead. So the Tigers do it again late. He got a slider, hanging slider right there, and he shortened up his swing too. Because he choked up on the bat, just kind of put it in play. Well, swing and a miss by Polanco. So the Rays are down by two here in the ninth. Edwin Jackson pitched through the eighth inning. And that grand slam home run. News to Jackson there. The shot in the center field, and it's going to get past Perez. Backed up by Zobris. 
Polanco rounding second on his way to third, and the throw is not in time. El Polanco, who has been nothing but trouble for the Rays, follows the grand slam home run with a triple back into center field. Fernando Perez doing a beeline straight shot to it, but really you got to go back at an angle a little bit. And he had no chance for it, really. So the Rays will make another pitching change. Hinge receiving congratulations in the Detroit dugout. Meanwhile, the Rays. Go to the bullpen for a left hander. There's one run charge to Balfour, one to Howell, two to Springer. And now Choke is on. He'll face Alex Avila with a man at third and still only one out. That was the opening strikeout Cormier got when he got the left handed hitting Guy and Guy in a switch hitter but forced to hit left handed. Well, you got to pick yourself off the floor now because you, you want to keep it at two runs. You got a shot in the bottom of the ninth inning. And we've seen the Rays get some base runners and put themselves right back in the game. So you got to save this run right here. And the pitch in there for a strike. The bullpen being worked over here in the ninth inning. One ball, one strike. Polanco at third. Picking up his fourth triple of the year. Got the game tying base hit in the seventh inning last night. Homered in the first of last night's game. A triple. Wave and a miss. It's one and two. He pinch hit. And the eighth had a base hit, so he's two for two after getting into the game late in this game. Another good professional hitter. Those are hitting situations. Avila's out on strikes and Schultz gets him. Two outs with a man at third. Curtis Granderson. Granderson. One for four. He doubled in the sixth. The strike. Rays do the lead off with Longoria in the bottom of the ninth. Right now they're down by two. Tell you what, uh, Jimmy Leland's really done a nice job utilizing his players in this series, and even letting Edwin Jackson go and pitch through the eighth inning there. He had more confidence in Edwin. 
to get Carlos Pena and Pat Burrell than using his bullpen. And he didn't care about pitch count. And Edwin was up for the challenge. That's how you teach a guy how to go deeper into the game, too. Swing and a miss. Granderson's out on strikes. Couple of strikeouts for Choate to end the inning. But four in the ninth on the Grand Slam home run by Inge. We go to the bottom of the ninth. 5 3 Detroit. Two, thanks to the grand slam home run by Brandon Inge. So we go to the bottom of the ninth. The Rays will face Brandon Lyon. Longoria to lead it off, followed by Eva Mora and Navarro. 53rd appearance for Brandon Lyon. He's got a good ERA at 295. Came in last night, got the job done. Right back out there today. Well, he picked up his second save of the year in that game, won by Detroit 8 6. I don't think Jimmy Leland liked the uh, control issues that Fernando Rodney showed Friday night. And there's a butt attempt by Longoria, and he fouls it right back over the screen. Strike one. There's Rodney sitting on the bullpen bench. Now he also heaved the ball into the stands after the first game win. I don't think Jimmy liked that. I mean, he backed him up. He said he wasn't trying to hurt anybody, but uh, he didn't like. He doesn't like that kind of stuff, do it for sure. He's a disciplined guy. Pitch is down. It's one and one. And he's not afraid to let his starter stay out there. He's not afraid to. Use who's doing the job, and now it's Brandon Lyon. Foul back, fastball, had a good cut. One and two. This has been an all too familiar scenario for the Rays on this homestand. You know, if the Tigers win this, you know how much confidence that would give Edwin Jackson? By letting him go stay out there in the eighth mm -hmm. inning and have his pitch count driven up. It wasn't well, about you, pitch count, it was about how he was pitching. And you know the message. I mean, Leland said, look, you you can get paid to exactly. you finish this inning. We're going to win it for you in the ninth. That's exactly what he told Absolutely. Him. Two and two. Montoria hits a fly ball in the right. Rayburn is there and makes the catch. One out. Baltimore leads Texas seven to nothing in the ninth inning at Baltimore. Toronto has a 14 to eight lead on New York. Bottom of the seventh in Toronto. And the Red Sox lead the White Sox three to nothing in the top of the seventh at Chicago.
Pitch to Aki is a strike. Eva Mora one for three. A little tap. Lion bare hands turns and throws and gets Eva Mora. Well, Lion was digging to get off the mound and grab that little tap. What a play by Lion. My goodness. Like a cat. Inge was there for it also, but he was going to let it get to him. Look at that play. Super. Here's Greg Zahn to pinch hit now for Navarro. He takes the pitch too high. One ball, no strikes. Strike on the outer part of the plate. It's now one and one. Two balls and a strike. It's foul. Two and two. The Rays, the last couple days, missing opportunities to. Chip away at the wild card deficit. Well, the Red Sox were losing a couple. The Rays let a couple get away from Detroit. The Tigers have put four up in the ninth. The Rays down to their final out here in the bottom of the ninth. And there it is. Strike three. Breaking ball. Got him looking on the curve. And this game is over. The Detroit Tigers have swept the Rays. They score four in the top of the ninth to do it. It's a 5-3 final. Edwin Jackson will get his 12th win of the year. Springer the loser. And Lyon picks up the save. And a 5-3 final here.